everybody welcome back to my lectures today we are going to see about the shank equation in this lecture we will see how to derive the equation and how to find out what percentage of blood is being shunted apart from that by the end of the video i will tell you what is the clinical use in knowing the physiological shunt that is happening in our body so let's proceed this is a pictorial representation of our body system for example if you see the amount of blood that is entering the pulmonary circulation where is it if you just consider this is a diagrammatic representation of the heart if you see the amount of blood that is entering the pulmonary circulation that is from the pulmonary artery the blood that is entering in the lungs what is it going to be it is going to be the cardiac output right that amount of the blood which is coming out through the aorta is the cardiac output but whatever is coming out that is undergoing the same amount of blood is being returned to the right side of the heart and it is entering the pulmonary circulation so the quantity is the same therefore the amount that is leaving the pulmonary circulation we denote it as the cardiac output that is we denote it by the variable q t fine so we know that the blood from the pulmonary artery it branches into smaller vessels and finally it reaches the alveoli so by the time it reaches the alveoli it this uh, it gets oxygenated from the alveoli by with the help of the capillaries right but unfortunately not all the blood from the pulmonary artery is being oxygenated a part of it is shunted or bypassed or left out from oxygenation the aim of the shunt equation is to find out what is the percentage of blood that is being shunted from getting oxygenated so if this is the amount of cardiac output that is entering the pulmonary circulation then let's assume this is the quantity of blood that is being shunted okay and uh, if you consider this consider this is this as the alveoli in that case the amount of blood that is being oxygenated let's denote it by subtracting the both the two how to understand it for example the cardiac output or the blood that is coming from the pulmonary artery it is 5 liters let's assume it as 100 percentage to make things simpler and the amount of blood that is shunted is 2 percentage so the remainder will be 98 which we had derived from subtracting the these two variables similarly we write the quantity of the blood that is being oxygenated as qt minus qs that is the difference between these two fine if you have understood this much let's proceed to the next part what is qt it is the amount of blood that is coming from the pulmonary artery what is pulmonary artery it is a giant vein so the oxygen content of the blood that is coming from the pulmonary artery must be equal to the oxygen content of a vein right so which we denote as venous oxygen content that is denoted as cvo2 right and i told you that a part of the blood is being shunted away so what do we understand by shunting it is not getting oxygenated due to many reasons so that means nothing has happened to that blood it is almost a similar blood but at a smaller proportion right so that oxygen content of that shunted blood will also be equal to the 
to the one which we had previously received that is from the pulmonary artery. So which is again minus oxygen content. But on the other hand if you see this quantity which is being oxygenated by the alveoli that is being oxygenated completely or almost completely. So it is being oxygenated by the, the help of capillaries. Therefore, we denote the oxygen content of this blood as C C O2 that is capillary oxygen content. Fine. So if you have understood this much, let's proceed further. The amount of blood that is coming out of the system. To understand that better, what is the system that we are talking about? We are talking about the lungs as a system, right? So the amount of blood that is coming from away from the lungs, what will that be? That will be the blood that gets pulled from the alveoli and also the bypassed blood which gets collected via the pulmonary veins and enters the systemic circulation, right? So that is the oxygenated blood. So this will also be, we are going to talk about that blood in this part, okay. So we know that the quantity is the same. We are not dealing with any change in quantity. We are just concerned about the oxygen content. So the one which entered is then, then bypassed, oxygenated and then is leaving the system. So the quantity is the same, that is Q T, but similar to this one. But if you think about the oxygen content, it will be different because it will be a mix from both these streams. One is fully oxygenated or almost fully oxygenated and the other is not oxygenated at all. So it has to be denoted as the newer variable. We denote it as the arterial oxygen content. So why do we denote it as arterial oxygen content? Because that is the blood that is come that has the entered the left side through the pulmonary veins and through the left ventricle and has entered through the aorta and from the aorta it has been reaching the arteries. We are talking about that part. That is the the part of the blood that is present in the arteries. Therefore, we denote that as arterial oxygen content. If you have understood this much, we have almost completed a major task. So let's now derive the shunt equation. How to do it? For that, you forget this portion. We are now concentrated, uh, we are now going to concentrate only about these three variables. The first part of the shunt equation is that this variable, we know that this is equal to the sum of this and the this because both the streams are joining and it is forming and it is forming a main stream, right? So I have written this variable QT into CaO2 is equal to this one CCO2 multiplied by QT minus QS adding that sum of with QS into CbO2. Now we are concentrated, we now want to find the shunt which is QS. After simplifying this, which I will do it for you, QT into CaO2, I am bringing the brackets out, CCO2 into QT minus CCO2 into QS plus QS into CBO2. Now, to find out, to bring the shunt outside. See, the shunt is this one as well as this. Now, I have grouped the variables containing QS on one side and the QT on the other. So, these two which contain QS are brought to the left hand side. The signs change when I bring it to the other side and these two variables I bring, I bring that to the right hand side. Now, the main purpose is I bring the QS outside and I bracket the other two minus CVO2. QS. 
the common variable the common factor in both these variables is qs so i bring that out and the remaining two i add them inside the brackets similarly the common factor in both these variables is qt which i bring out and the remaining factor the two i keep i keep it retain it inside the brackets exactly so now since we are interested in qs i am bringing this component to the denominator side cco2 minus cvo2 so now we have come to the end of the shunt equation so this is the qs that is the shunt the qs is equal to qt multiplied by capillary oxygen content minus arterial oxygen content divided by capillary oxygen content minus venous oxygen content if you substitute values in them then you will get the qs as that is the shunt as 2 to 5 percentage so this is the physiological shunt that happens in our body but what is the need to know this how does it clinically uh, gives us an understanding if you normally see the saturation oxygen saturation through a pulse oximeter we know very clearly that it is almost about 98 95 which is all normal right because that 2 to 5 percentage the remaining 2 to 5 percentage is because of this physiological shunt that is happening in our body i hope the shunt equation is clear for you thank you for listening till the end of the lecture if you know someone to whom this lecture will be helpful kindly share my video if you want any topics which i which you would like me to teach you uh, kindly leave the description in the comment box so, uh, if uh, if you like this video like and subscribe to my channel that will keep me motivated thank you